what you get and you don't pitch a fit. If your team plays eight games, they play eight. I'm running like Nike, we got it on lock. Everything litty, I love when it's hot. Good morning. The question, of course, as you just heard that, is will eight be enough? An old TV show. And for years on television, there was nothing bigger than LSU and Alabama and college football. The world stop. What did Paul Feinbaum say yesterday on the program? The president was there. The college football world was watching. And we may not get to watch LSU in Alabama this year. Keyshawn J. Will Zubin presented by Progressive Insurance. Keyshawn on the KJZ injured list retroactive to yesterday with the foot injury. Bone bruise. Bone Bone bruise, bruise, turf toe, some kind of football injury. not broken. (laughs) Fifth metatarsal bone bruise. Bruce, did, did he slip on a McDonald's uh, bag? Brandon, <laughs> no. Marshall? No. Brandon Marshall will be joining us after he leaves the inside the NFL studio. That's the voice of Bart Scott. He's joining us this morning, the 11 year NFL vet. He'll Appreciate be playing the role of key this morning. So key's football knowledge is second to none, but Bart right here as a football stud himself with the Ravens and the Jets okay. here Slash to fill the AKA void. Day trader. Yeah, I mean, man. with the, the, the multitude of screens, there's a, there's a laptop. There's a, there's two iPad, cell phones, two cell phones. <laughs> There's a lot going on over here, man. <laughs> but it's great to have you here. Yeah, it's a pleasure. It's awesome to have you here. We're going to talk a little NFL, but we're going to start with a little college football. And guys, top of mind is this. Alabama's back at the top of the poll. They're the number one team in the country. They have the number one coach in the sport, arguably the number one coach of all time. The betting favorite, believe it or not, for the Heisman, the number one choice is is their quarterback. Now, the reason this game with LSU is off and hopefully will be made up at some particular point is because of an outbreak on the defending national champions. They may not have enough scholarship players. They're so bereft of talent right now. Coach O is trying to squeeze guys from around the roster at the quarterback Hmm. position. This isn't like backup offensive tackle, fifth guy on special teams. They're looking to find and round out the quarterback situation for the champs. But they're on their way to their worst ever season for a defending champion. Nobody has played this bad following a championship. But right now, it's all about Alabama. They're the focal point. What do you guys make of the fact that this game right now is off the books and may not be made up, especially playoff implications for Alabama at stake? I mean, for me, it's 2020 with the strength of schedule with LSU being so bad. I mean, how can they even help Alabama move up? They have no shot of winning this game. They understand that. That's why, listen, like we, me, me and Jay Will was talking about if this would have been like the, um, you know, if this would have been on the other side, they would have probably said, you know what, yeah, Alabama would say, you know what, you know, let's take the um, Nick Saban you know, COVID test, three, three, three hours, take two in a row, and you'll be all done. And they would have been back. But, you know, old, uh, you know, Coach O was saying, you know what, Let's just pause this one. Let's hope we can, you know, they don't want to get splattered. They don't want to get beat down. So it's like one of those things where you're saying, you know what, who needs a game? It's not going to affect the, the strength of schedule. Alabama's still going to be number one. You know, you have Clemson. You have Notre Dame that's moving up. You know what I mean? I think this game can be pushed off. And I wonder if we get into this world where, you know, it's, it's subjective anyway. You know, college football is subjective. When you're just trying to guess, you have a panel of trying to figure out who's number one, who's number two, where does the Big Ten weigh in this, where does Ohio State come in. I think everybody understands that Alabama is the better team. It's unfortunate, but I think we all expected this this season to be uneven. Like yeah. we, we, I didn't come into a season with COVID and all the moving parts expecting yeah. everything to play out the way it was supposed to originally be played out. I mean, there's been nothing that's been prepared about an unpreparable year that we've had in 2020. Right. So I understand that a team like Texas A&M might want to have the hope that a loss to LSU might be able to propel them into a, a, a position to have a chance to go into the playoffs. But reasonably, when you, when you look at it, all right, so the fact that Alabama beat Texas A&M, but then Texas A&M beat Florida, right? So it... it if this were like just like Bart said, if this were the LSU team from last year, if it was a monumental game, I think right. we would have found some way to see if we could test LSU out in order to play. Right. But LSU also has another game that they need to make up with Florida before that, correct? Correct. So there's uh there's a lot of moving parts here, and I didn't come into expecting if we miss it, I kinda I'm okay with it, Zubin. I'm okay with it. Let's run through the calendar as is. To both of your points, college football always has been <clears throat> excuse me, somewhat Uneven. Some teams are saying we can play an FCS team. Certain conferences like the Big Ten are saying we don't play the FCS. Certain leagues play eight conference games. Certain play nine. 
Certain are playing cross-divisional games every so often. Certain aren't. In the Big 12, you play everybody once guaranteed. A true round robin. Can't do that in the Big 10 or the SEC because they both have 14 teams. So you're right. It's unwieldy at the start. So if the sport's going to be uneven, there is no commissioner, there's no uniformity. In a year like 2020, when everything's out the window, it's business as usual for college football. To Jay's point, the SEC is baked in one week at the end of the season for any makeup games. That's when LSU and Florida would meet. The problem is there's only one week to do it. Hmm. So if LSU has to play Alabama, well, I guess they're out of luck at the moment because their one week is December 12th against Florida. They have two games to make up, but only one week to do it. The numbers don't make sense. SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey on the Paul Feinbaum show on Monday said the bottom line is no matter how convoluted it gets, they're going to try to play every single game they can. We just have to manage through that, and we'll work with our, our universities, our athletics programs to do so. We don't have an infinite amount of time, and that's where the pressure over these last four or five weeks starts to mount. So the adjustments may be a little bit different than we contemplated six weeks ago, but still our focus is on trying to play as much of the football uh, schedule as possible. That's the big comment, as much as possible. And, and here's where it stinks for Florida, because Florida will then have to play LSU. Alabama will be idle being rested, getting ready to play Florida when they come out of that game. And that that's – look, you can always find an argument. I, I hear some coaches say, well, we want to continue to play to keep our legs and keep our – you know, get a lather. But then if, if you're Bama having a week off to rest yeah. and to get prepared for your opponent, knowing that you're going to play mm-hmm. them, allowing that extra time for Nick Saban and company to scheme, yeah. that's a major advantage. Yeah, exactly. When you talk about a two-week you know, opportunity to break down your opponent and who knows if they're going to get out of that game – healthy, you know, what injuries you're going to have. And, like, listen, the, 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 the craziest thing is COVID. COVID is, like, the thing that you really can't account for because when it, when it breaks out, it's nothing you can do about it. You have to shut teams down. Just imagine if this would have happened in the Big Ten. Mm-hmm. Big Ten, you would have been out for, for three weeks. And where does that come in effect? What happens to Wisconsin? What happens to these other schools? And, like, it's all subjective, right? It's all about the committee. But we know what it looks like when we see it. We know a top five team we see it, and you hope that the conference tournaments will help try and make some, you know, get some of these answers that we need. A couple of other things to keep in mind, too. There are a lot of people that said the SEC did everything they possibly could. Remember, they started their season on September 26th. The ACC and other leagues started around September 12th, so they waited. Unlike the Big Ten, they never canceled the season slash postponed the season. They said, we're in a holding pattern. We'll see where the virus is. And initially... It worked, even though there were outbreaks before games started. So they get some credit for waiting, for not postponing. Then they had the foresight to put that December 12th week on the back of the schedule to say if anybody needs to play, here's where we can do the makeup date. So for me personally, I'm not going to blame Greg Sankey because they were cautious at the beginning. They didn't overreact, but they realized something was going to happen. So they baked in a week at the end of the schedule. Now, the one thing I would say, if you don't root for somebody like Florida or Alabama right now who are on the track to play in the SEC championship game. There are a dozen other teams in the league. So if you do have a game that has been canceled and needs to be made up, the league is saying, even though over the years there has been one standalone date for the SEC title game, it's the only game that's going on in our league so everybody can watch. They are saying that if you're a fan of one of the other 12 teams and you have a game postponed, you can make that game up on December 19th. It would obviously be a JV affair because everybody's going to want to watch the SEC championship game. But it is notable for the student-athletes, for the coaches, and for the fans that if you have an opportunity to make a game up, they will allow you to do it on conference championship Saturday. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, and I'm trying to figure out, like, when it's the national championship, and much like the NFL, you should have baked in time to make up games because you think about bowl season, it's pretty much a month. So it seems like no matter what, you should be able to, if you need to move your, 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 your conference championship, you should be able to move and it should be fine. All I'm saying is that when you jump off the cliff and you're assembling the plane on the way down, <laughs> I'm sure you're going to miss some screws here or there. Yeah. But damn, this plane looks pretty sturdy considering how they had to put it together so quickly. It looks pretty sturdy. Yeah. And, and if I'm looking at it too, Bart, just to say, I really feel like the college football playoffs are going to be locked. I feel like they're locked pretty much. I mean, Alabama's on this path. Like we we've seen them dominate Texas A and M. Even if Texas A and M were to beat, were to find some way, if this doesn't lead up to, to Florida, um, I feel like Alabama, Notre Dame, Ohio State, and Clemson 
Like that's going to be your college football playoffs. Yeah, for teams that are on the outside looking in, like Cincinnati and BYU, remember no group of five team has ever made the playoff. And by the way, quickly to Bart's point, they have eliminated eligibility for bowls with regards to wins this year. You don't have to have six. You just have to be playing and are a team, and they're going to waive it. So bowls will be a little bit just different have a fan base. this year. Indeed, mm. that can't travel this go around. There will be no Cameron Crazies this year. Dukes oh. are asking. Yeah, we're going to get oh. into that this morning with Jay. Mr. Duke, on the Dr. Pepper Twitter feed. So what arena is most impacted by not having fans due to COVID? Be a part of the Keyshawn, J. Will, and Zubin Nation on the Dr. Pepper Twitter feed. It could be any arena, any stadium. You tell us. ESPN Nation presented by Dr. Pepper. It's official. Thank you.